Good afternoon, church. It's a rainy day out there, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, how many of you got caught in the rain? Nobody. All came out here, safe and dry. Praise the Lord. Yes, God is good to us all the time. Shall we rise? Shall we rise? Let's prepare our hearts to worship the one and only true God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. For indeed, He is our God and He is good. Amen.
Lord God, you are a king, Lord, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. You are our God. There's none like you. Lord, we may come from different places, Lord, from Thailand, from, 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 from Singapore, wherever we may go visiting in other countries also, Lord God. We want to acknowledge you, Lord God. You are our God. You are our God, the true and living God. So we pray that even as right now, even as we come into your presence, we invite you to just move freely, Lord God, touch your people. I pray, oh Lord God, for those who need a healing in the body, uh, whether it's the emotionally, relationship. Lord, I just pray that, Lord God, just release, Lord God, your, your healing virtue, Lord God, your word, Lord, upon the person. Lord, touch the person and restore the person to divine good health, Lord. We want to pray also that, Lord God, for those who need a word from you, Lord. I pray, O oh God, that, Lord God, they will hear from you. I pray, O oh God, for hearing our ears and our hearts to be open to you. Speak, Lord God, even as, 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 as we have worshipped earlier, as a pastor share the word. Lord, we allow our hearts. We say, Lord, uh, here we are. We listen to you, Lord God. You speak. Your servant, we hear you. We welcome you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all people say... Amen. Please be seated. Okay. All right. A very warm welcome to all, right? Those that's here and online, right? This is the Paliba Chinese Methodist Church Contemporary Service. We we worship on Saturday, four thirty. All right. Uh, I just want to thought that you know you saw somebody different. A group of people came from uh, the Spring Home. We welcome our brothers and sisters from. Spring home, Chan Rai, please stand. All right, uh, yes, all right. 
We have been uh, working with them, uh, partnering with them for I think the past 20 years, okay, in terms of giving, seeing some of these people from young ones to, you know, as become parents and all that. So they're going to give us a, 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 I think, the present about their work in uh, Spring Home as well as a performance. Uh. So uh, I thought, let's welcome them. Uh, this person who is going to present is Sister Panita. Yeah, come. After they perform, then we talk about the, the CU corner and everything else. Okay, let, let, let them have a seat first. Yeah, come. Hello, hello, test. <laughs> Good evening, Pastor Brothers and uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, still so excited to be here, even though uh, this is my third time already. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to thank God for allowing me to be here so that I can meet everyone tonight. Okay. And thank you, everyone, for having me today. Uh, my name is Panida, and now I'm 24 years old. I'm a student in Spring Home Foundation, and today I would like to present you about our Spring Home Ministry. Okay, as you can see on the screen here, okay, this is uh, our Spring Home Foundation located in Chiang Rai, Thailand. So before we start, I have like a short video clip to show you how our students live there. It's, it's to show like their daily routine. Yes, so let's watch together. Crip you just want is uh, our student there, and uh, it's, it's uh, their daily routine in a week. Yeah. So uh, now it's a spring home committees. Uh, you might get familiar with like Uncle Kenny and Auntie Alison from Bayaleba Church. Uh, next slide, please. And for this is the Spring Home Foundation committees. We have five pastors who, dip, uh, who serve God in different ministry, but uh, mainly watch over in Spring Home our pastor apart and a pastor award. And uh, this is our Spring Home assistant, Bu Yu. She uh, respond in account assistant, and Auntie Yang, She is cook for everyone in Spring Home. 
uh, our mission is reaching out to the Akka tribe in Chiang Rai, Thailand. Uh, the reason why we specific on Akka tribe is because Akka people is, uh, the majority of Akka people is very poor, so the parents cannot afford their children to have a good education. And another reason is Akka people still have like strong old belief, which is belief in their ancestor, and some still believe in ghosts. So we would like to bring the gospel to them, leading them to know Jesus and welcome Jesus as they see we are one day. Uh, and uh, thank God that this year, 2024, uh, our Spring Home Foundation have reached 12 years anniversary. Uh, throughout this time, we have assisted so many students who are underprivileged children, uh, orphans, and children with the parents in jail. Okay, next right, please. Uh, for our journey into in 2012, Spring Home started with 14 students in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And now in 2024, we have uh, 24 students in Chiang Rai, Thailand. This is a Spring Home student who graduated from university throughout 12 years. Moving to Spring Home objective, the first objective is to provide the poor and underprivileged children an opportunity for education. The second one is to share the gospel with non-believers, students, and their families. The next one is to lead and guide our students to grow in their love, knowledge, grace, and fear of God. Next is to outreach to school, churches, and neighbors. Next. Uh, and the last is to encourage our students to go for a seminary study as a first step to serve God full time. As you can see on the slide, uh, these, two, these two people uh, used to be our student in Spring Home. Yes, next slide. Uh, throughout 12 years, Spring Home has 39 students who were baptized to welcome Jesus as their Savior. Spring Home also conduct our lessons to train our students. We train them to blow harmonica, play piano, play guitar, play kahong. And uh, we also help them to grow their spiritually. Like every Saturday afternoon, our students will participate on online prayer with the people from Worldwide. And we let them to take turn to be a worship leader at the church and spring home as well. We also go to outreach at Anuban Mefa Luang School. This school is located in the mountain of Chiang Rai, and the majority of students here are Akka, Akka tribe and Lahu tribe, and who are very underprivileged children. Uh, my pastor went there every Wednesday to conduct like Chinese lessons and also conduct Bible lessons for, stu for students who are interested to, in learning Jesus. And thank God for the last year, we have uh, almost, uh, we have seven student, 17 students who decided and want to know more about Jesus from this school. This is a uh, Christmas outreach at Anuban Me Fa Luang. Uh, we went there every year to conduct some classes like uh, English class, uh, and, uh, and in the afternoon we organized the uh, Christmas party with them and celebrate party and, Chris and celebrate Christmas together there. That was so much fun. Yeah, this is the con this is the classes that we conduct there. Next slide, please. Uh, this is Spring Home Christmas Vibe. Every year, we will uh, we have invited our family to join to celebrate Christmas at Spring Home. We are preparing special meal together and having meal together. And in the in December 2023, thank God that Paya Le Bashers, led by Uncle Kenny and the team, came to visit us in Spring Home 
at Thailand. Uh, coming this time, the team gave us 20 computer laptops, which very useful for our students, and, and took everyone out to have like a special meal together. Yeah. Moreover, Reverend Louis and his wife also visited Spring Home last year, and they also went to Aulish at the school with my pastor. During the COVID-19, we distribute rice and grocery to the poor brothers and sisters in at Paji Bethany and Hua En Aka Church. And we also go to uh, go to our student house to provide the rice and grocery to their parents. As you can see on the screen, this these are the natural disasters that we have encountered uh, quite every year. During the rainy season, we face like heavy thunderstorm, which caused the damage to our property. And during the summer, uh, we like encountered the drought and forest uh, uh, forest fire forest fire above us. You, and lastly, you can be a part of our Spring Home Ministry by praying for the ministry, praying for our ministry, or receiving Spring Home new letters by email or WhatsApp, uh, or sponsoring our student for education. And uh, if you want to visit us, you can make a short tip to visit us at Spring Home. Uh, we, we will be happy and always welcome. Finally, I would like to be a representative from Spring Home to thanks everyone in Bayale Bashers for always supporting and praying for Spring Home throughout 12 years. Uh, without your help, Spring Home cannot be blessed to uh, underprivileged children in Thailand. So I think this, is, this brings us to the end of my presentation today. Thank you so much for your attention.大家好，我的名字叫杨秀红，我们是冰红的学生。今天我们要表演的节目是山歌歌名是《Uresmia》，请大家聆听，谢谢。来到。my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burden be then I am still and ready in the silence and see you come and sing while we
Thank you, thank you for that, that wonderful presentation. Okay, all the while we will be giving to the missions farm, okay, some of these goes to that. Okay, so we want to encourage generous giving into the missions fund too. Okay, um, uh, we're going to have our CU corner. CU corner is outside later. After service, you can go there and mingle around. Okay, so get to know them and all that. Right, okay, next slide. Ah, guess what? We were told that registration ends, the early bird ends last week, right? They had decided to extend it to this week, right? This week, this, 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 today. So those of you who have not signed up, all right, if you want to enjoy that special rate, please sign up by today. After that, it goes up again. It goes up to the normal rates, okay? Right, uh, this is the sign up, the code. There's going to be a table outside later, yeah? So you can do that, the registration outside also. Okay, now, this is something that I was told to remind you, okay? This fire alarm call point, we have it around the fire exit points. They are not for play play one, okay? You don't just press and that. Apparently, there have been cases where people just go and strike it and, and the recent one was yesterday, uh, last Sunday, all right? So, uh, last week, lah. So, please take note, they are for fire emergency. So, don't just feel like it, you know, just knock on it. Thanks. Okay, this is something that's going to happen on the 1st of May. Usually on the 1st of May, we have something interesting from the, 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 the Methodist Church. Okay, this is going to be a May Day seminar. A few speakers you see there is going to be speaking. And uh, you could sign up. You can register scanning the, the QR code there. All right. You also see when you come into the sanctuary, that is a QR code of our church bulletin, whether it's in front or behind. You can scan it, and and this code this code doesn't change uh. Every week it's the same. It's going to be replaced with a new bulletin, so you can keep it and 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 get to a new bulletin. And these things are there. Okay. With that, uh, I think we have offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God, even as you. We have received freely from you, Lord God. Uh, we want to give freely too. Make us cheerful, generous givers, Lord God. So that, Lord God, whatever that we give, Lord God, will, will, will lead to the expansion of your kingdom, extension of your kingdom. We give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you'll see the two boxes here. Come forward and give. Or you can scan the QR code with your banking app and then give us through that. We have Irene for the scripture reading.
Hi Church, today's scripture reading is taken from John chapter 10 verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lay down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Good afternoon. Uh, today we come to a very uh, familiar passage for many of us, uh, John chapter 10, verse 11 to 18. Uh, it is the passage on Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Right, I'd like to suggest in uh, today, we have perhaps three kinds of uh, shepherds or three kinds of people or three kinds of leaders uh, that we can think about all right, or think of. The first is the volunteer. Uh, I think many of us would consider ourselves volunteers. Uh, the second would be the hireling. Uh, perhaps you're called the pastor or the ministry staff, uh, the hireling. Uh, and then finally, it's the real deal. The real deal. All right, so let's take a look at these three uh, categories, uh, these three kinds of leaders, and perhaps in a way, a sheep as well, uh, to see whether they speak about us. All right, and what kind of uh, uh, what kind of, of example Jesus can be for us? Well, this is something that I've uh, come across in my ministry uh, commonly. Many people say the church is made up of volunteers. All right, but after they say that, they give a shrug. It's as if you know, there's nothing we can do. Whether as a pastor or as a leader, you know, the sheep can decide, or y'all can decide whether you want to be involved or not. You know, but this is uh, so common. It's so much a reality that it has become the truth. That I hear it so often uh, said by so many leaders and even uh, pastors. You know, uh, we are sheep uh, who need to be cajoled or even carried rather than those who hear and follow the master's voice. All right? And I think that's the reality that as we talk about among pastors. It's almost like, you know, rather than, hey, follow, let's go. You know, and the sheep follow, quite, quite follow. Huh? Uh, it's almost like you have to carry the sheep on our, on our back, you know, to bring them to where uh, we hope they would go. All right? Uh, but not just sheep, even for shepherds. Uh, we have shepherds who see it as a time commitment. <laughs> Office hours, after that, please don't disturb me. <laughs> All right? uh, pastors have said that before, right? Uh, like my off day is my off day. Or I only work this time. After that, please don't try to contact me. You know? I'm not on call 24-7. Uh, uh, rather than a calling to care for the sheep, it's a job. Let's put it this way. And that's one of the challenges I face, uh, especially in our CAC circle because you're itinerant. All right, uh, we are moved from church to church, you know. And after a while, wow, it's like, you know, it's more a job than maybe a calling or a caring uh, for people. Well, the result will be this. Uh, sometimes we see it as a country club or a charity. A country club is where you give some money, like your tithes and offerings, and you come and get certain services, but it all depends on you. All right, whether you have to come, whether you have to use the services, you know, you just give the money and after that you kind of decide. That's a country club. Right? Or it may be better as a charity, you know, we give money uh, so that the church can do good works elsewhere or to people. Uh, but is this what Jesus envisioned the church to be? Think about it. Do we, I mean, let's be honest, I think we see frequently the church in some ways as a country club 
or charity. Uh, we do see uh, the shepherds, you know, even as you see some pastors, if we are honest, you know, they are more like it's a job for them. Uh, rather than a calling. Uh, perhaps you don't see the love. They may be responsible. Some are irresponsible. Uh, some are responsible, you know, but it's more like a job than a calling. And actually, sheep as well. We see um, the pastor or the church as a, as a place to, for, to serve you uh, rather than for you to follow the master. Well, first, let's take a look at the volunteer. Uh, there's even volunteer sheep. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think there is a, the reality is that uh, there is volunteerism or volunteer sheep now. Uh, the reality is this, the sheep choose their pen. <laughs> you decide which church you want to go to. Uh, sometimes you go from church to church, go and visit, 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 until we decide, okay, maybe this is a church uh, for me. All right. Uh, so the sheep choose their pen. Uh, the sheep choose their shepherd. <laughs> That's one thing I tell my younger pastors. You may go to a church, you know, but the shepherd is actually not you. The shepherd is someone else they follow, uh, some other pastor they listen to, some books that uh, some pastor who writes a book, you know, and they read them, you know. And many times you have to come there, to you go there and you have to kind of uh, reteach or maybe uh, balance off, you know, whatever it is. Uh, so the sheep choose their shepherd. And I've heard lay people say before, oh, you know, Met uh, Methodist church like that, you know, uh, you don't agree with the pastor in the mind, you wait it up. Sooner or later, they'll no longer be around, right? Uh, they'll be posted to another church. Right? And, and, and after that, it's fine. You can just do your own thing, you know. Uh, I've, uh, I've also heard uh, uh, people say, okay, I will respect you as a pastor because that's your title, that's your job, right? Uh, but I won't listen to you. I won't follow you because I disagree with you. Uh, the sheep decide whether to follow. All right. Uh, the sheep must be convinced and persuaded, uh, especially in this generation. Uh, I can tell you, my grandmother's generation, the pastor is always right. They always say, Musu yi ting su All right, this pastor never makes mistake, one, you know, really, really. Why would pastor say, sure, true? Now I have to convince you, I have to show, like, no, Bible say this, Bible say that. You know, I must logically argue, logically persuade, uh, before you even want to consider uh, following. Uh, in short, uh, sheep are very independently minded individuals. But is that really what sheep are? <laughs> is that the nature of sheep? But that's the reality uh, today. Volunteer uh, sheep. However, it can be quite spiritually disastrous. Because I think uh, there are certain inherent sheep qualities, not just found in sheep, but found in human uh, beings as well. Her instinct. We like to go where everyone is going. Right? We feel very safe. If everyone is doing it, uh, that's the best place to be or that's the best place to go to. Uh, we can be quite stupid and stubborn, just like sheep. All right? uh, we can be easily frightened and confused. You hear the news you know, about this, about that, about this, about that, you know, and then after that we, we kind of can't decide. Uh, we have a proneness to wonder and need for guidance. All right, we tend to forget about God, we kind of forget about spiritual things, and we kind of wander away. Then the pastor has to come and you know, try to gather you back, kind of thing. Uh, there's a need for a great deal of maintenance. <laughs> Uh, as you know, sheep, uh, every few years, uh, the, the, the shepherd has to shave off the wool. Right? If not too much wool, uh, the sheep will die. Okay, the sheep cannot move because it's just too much, you know. Just like you have haircut also, right? Uh, after, uh, no, I know some of you don't like have haircut, like boy. All right, but you need a haircut, but after a while, you know, it just gets too messy, you know. Uh, great deal for maintenance. Uh, and, there's a def and they are defenseless and dependent on others for protection. All right. Uh, so you may try to be independently minded, but uh, just like sheep, I think human beings, uh, we have some of these qualities that make it dangerous uh, for us to be independently minded or too independently uh, minded. But let's contrast. What are Jesus' expectation of sheep? We know our expectations. <laughs> when we come to church, we know what we want out of the church, what we want out of the pastor, uh, know what we want out of the shepherd in that sense. Uh, how about Jesus? Well, verses 14 to 16, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. All right, so we love this part. <laughs> Jesus lays down his life, all right? Uh, but this other small part, uh, we tend to forget. And they will listen to my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. 
So let's work, let's work uh, some of these uh, points out, right? Uh, the first is this. Jesus expects your, you to know the shepherd's voice. Do you know your shepherd's voice? Right? That's why the retreat, we are going to talk about hearing God. <laughs> uh, so that you can have an idea of what, God, what God's voice sounds like. But do you know? Do you know your shepherd's voice? Are you living a life where you, where you know you, whatever decisions you make, whatever job you decide on, uh, etc.? You know, uh, have you ever consulted God? Have you tried to hear His voice? And if you try, have you ever heard it? Do you know the shepherd's voice? Jesus expects that His sheep know His voice. And then after that, also to follow the shepherd. To follow the shepherd. You know, uh, Western shepherding and Eastern shepherding are different. I think uh, many of you know this. Uh, Western shepherding is more herding, okay, uh, where the sheep dogs will go and bark, woo, 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 and then you know, move the sheep uh, from place to place. Uh, Eastern shepherding is the shepherd will say, let's go. And then the sheep know the voice, and then the shepherd walks, the sheep will follow. All right? Uh, so very, two very different styles. And, but Jesus was... Uh, talking about the Eastern style because that was where he was from. And he's basically saying, you know, you need to hear my voice. And when I say go, you hear my voice, you just follow. No, um, there, are, there are stories whereby, you know, sometimes they keep the sheep uh, from a few shepherds in the sheep, same sheep pen. All right? And what is interesting, the shepherd just needs to come and speak to the sheep and then the sheep, the right be, the right sheep will follow the shepherd, okay? Uh, the sheep will not follow another shepherd. The sheep will only follow the shepherd's voice whom he or she or it knows. And that's what Jesus expects from his sheep. Number one, to recognize his voice. Number two, to follow. It's, he, sheep cannot be independent. <laughs> Jesus does not expect you and I to be independent Independently minded to evaluate, uh, to see what Jesus' demands are reasonable or not. Jesus' commands are reasonable or not. He just expects us to follow. You know, many times we want him to be a shepherd, but we don't want to be sheep. Isn't that true? We want him to care for us, to protect, uh, pro to provide for us, to protect us. You know, but the other balance is this: we, we must be his sheep before he can become our shepherd, right? But frequently, we want him to be the shepherd, uh, but we don't really act, in a sense, like sheep. Uh, they also have only one shepherd, uh, not to be the shepherd. <laughs> Alright? Jesus is not here to serve you. Jesus is not here to follow you, to be at your whims uh, and, and your call, you know, to, to, to answer your whim and fancy, but it's actually the other way around. And then, be willing to be one flock in one hand. You need to be a community. It's not just Jesus and you. It's Jesus and whatever pen that you are in. And we as a community follow the shepherd. Jesus does not just lead one sheep at a time. He calls and all his sheep follow. Well, if sheep hear their shepherd's voice, then if, you, if they aren't listening, do they belong to to Jesus. And maybe that's something we may want to ask ourselves. Are you following Jesus? If you are not following Jesus in your heart, you know, right, I'm really not following Jesus, then is Jesus really your shepherd? You may declare Him, you know, that He's my Lord and, and perhaps He's my Saviour, but the true test of whether He's your shepherd is whether you have chosen to follow Him. Not just believe in Him, but follow Him. Well, you have volunteer sheep. We also have volunteer shepherds. Uh, the, that's the reality, all right? Uh, some desire to be shepherds because of innate desire for prestige and control. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh, I can tell you uh, being a pastor is great. You know, you know why not? You know why it's great? Uh? It's like this. Uh, you go and work. Uh, you have to prove yourself, right? You have to prove yourself then to go up the ranks, right? All right, from just a, a staff and then be a ma ma manager, you know, of a, a, a team or team leader, then manager, then after that, some of us get stuck somewhere, move on, you no know, director, supervisor, blah, 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 until maybe one day CEO, 
right? But before you become a CEO, it's like so many years to prove yourself, right? I tell you, a pastor, uh, very easy to be CEO. You know how? Uh, you go to seminary, you study for three years, after that, you become CEO of a church already. We don't go through the... More, of course, like a, it's a member on trial, four years training, as if uh, But honestly, you just get the degree and suddenly become a CEO, whether you're fit or not, <laughs> whether you've been trained or not, whether you have the experience or not. Suddenly, you become the head of a church or the head of a congregation. All right? And sometimes, um, some pastors are attracted to certain things. And right, that's because of the culture or the, the, the environment that we have been in. One of the things I noticed in our CAC, Chinese Annual Conference uh, 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 um, uh, uh, environment is this. I find that the older CAC pastors are very pastoral. All right? They are not CEOs kind. Those of you who have been long enough in church, I uh, know. The older pastors, especially the Chinese, the dialect speaking pastors, are very pastoral. Okay, they will go and visit you, you know, they will go and do hospitalization and all these kind of things, you know, because that's the pastors they were exposed to. Uh, those of you who know track churches, Trinity Annual Conference churches, uh, they have a different style. They, they tend to be a bit more CEO, all right? Because if you are a church of 1,000 or 2,000, it's very hard to really know everyone, all right? It's very hard to be pastoral outside of a job scope. Right? Uh, so they tend to be a little bit more CEO-like. All right? And being English, that's how we, we... You all want your pastor to be good preachers and a good leader, right? I can tell you the Hokkien service, for example, as long as you go and visit them, you're like a hao mu shi. Okay? That's their quality or that's their expectation. You don't preach well, you visit them, it's okay. You don't lead well, go and visit them, care what, it's okay. That's what they want. Okay, uh, so sometimes there are different uh, reasons and sense for that, right? Uh, so sometimes pastors, because of prestige or control, uh, you suddenly, you know, you, if you go outside of work, you may be a nobody, but suddenly you study three years in seminary, uh, you become a somebody in church, all right? Others don't desire and must be persuaded to sacrifice. A lot of pastors are there also. Uh, they run away. They hear God, uh, the call of God, they run away. And only a few years later, they cannot run away anymore. Then they come back and say, okay, good, good, God, I will follow you. you know? uh, but if we do that, if the cost is too great or it competes too much with their personal life, they quit. And here, perhaps, I'm not just talking about pastors. I can suggest leaders as well. Because we are called. And you see the scriptures, you're not called to be a pastor, it's a professional job. You're called also to the leaders of the church. Leader of the church is also a shepherd, biblically. All right? Uh, so you may not desire, may be persuaded, but you know, there is a limit. There's a certain amount of time, effort, and energy. And you say, after more than that, that's it. Uh, that's, uh, that's a volunteer. Huh? Or if it's too frustrating, the sheep are un cooperating, <laughs> then they quit. <laughs> You all go and mind your own business. You all don't want to listen to me. It's so difficult, you know. You all are naughty, naughty sheep. So independently uh, minded. Uh, but I think the attitude basically is this. I'm only a volunteer. I'm actually not paid to do this. So I decide and choose what I want to be involved in and how much. True or not? You have this attitude. Before I became a pastor, I would say maybe I have this attitude also, no? Hey, this is a pastor's job. <laughs> He's paid to do it. Uh. I, I'm not paid to do it. Why am I doing it? He should be the one doing it, right? Yeah, so that's the attitude of voluntarianism. But what about Jesus' expectation of volunteer nun? <laughs> Jesus has no expectation of the volunteer shepherd because he doesn't call volunteers to be shepherds. <laughs> he calls them to be shepherds. Right, so we have brought in worldly understanding of leadership or shepherding uh, from maybe the, the charity. Huh? Re really, on this charity is volunteers, right? Really, you, you volunteer. And we can't incorporate it into the church so, so much so that our understanding now is a lot of voluntarianism. But Jesus doesn't call you and I to be volunteer shepherds. There is no such concept in Scripture. Why? The lives of his sheep are too precious. Jesus loves his sheep too much to call you and I to volunteer and then decide, in a sense, on our own. 
Well, you have the volunteers, then you have the hireling, the one who is hired in that sense. Uh, verse 12 to 13, he who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters the flock. He flees because he's a hired hand and does not care about the sheep. It's a job. It's a job. Do we have staff or pastors who do it like a job? Yes. We do. We do. The reality is then, most shepherds were hired. They're paid to keep the herd alive by leading them to water from pasture to pasture. That's the primary job of the shepherd, right? Bring them, finish, ready, graze, no more, no more grass to eat, uh, lead them to another place uh, to go and eat, all right? Uh, to go and eat or another river of water, you know? But your main, other main job was to protect them. Uh, this is where the problem is. Uh, wild animals would prey on the unsuspecting flock. Thieves would try to pick one up here and there. Now, for those hired shepherds, this wasn't their favorite part of the job, right? Because it's easy to lead sheep, right? Remember Eastern one? Well, hey, hello, let's go. Then people, the sheep will just follow, right? Uh, so maybe like, not so much hardship. No, but when it comes to defend, and my life is on the line. Wow. Between the life of the sheep and me, I'm more important. All right, because sheep can just become mutton chop, la. it's okay. Huh? People can eat, become mutton chop, right? Uh, they can die, it's okay, you know. But, but oh, I'm, I'm the shepherd, you know. Human life is so important, you know. Am I, uh, should I risk my life over one lousy little sheep, all right? I mean, most cost me, I don't know how much sheep costs, 500000 $2,000, I don't know how much it costs. Oh, my human life worth much more than that. Well, perhaps the reality today, uh, here, I would call it the volunteer. That means you're not a paid job. And you're very responsible. I, I thank God for people like you. Uh, you are not paid for it, but you act as if you are paid for it. <laughs> you are very responsible, almost like a paid staff. So, so some of you uh, leaders are good enough to act like hirelings rather than volunteers. They know they have a responsibility, right? And they try to keep to their responsibility. And really, without being paid, my head's off to you. Uh, I always say, lay people are busier than pastors because you've got a secular job. After your secular job, you go to church, you've got your church job. I only have one job, which is church job, <laughs> all right? So it's much easier for me. So I really, my head's off to you, you know, as a volunteer hireling, all right? They sacrifice beyond the call of volunteerism, and some of you do. I look at you and really I, I respect you for your commitment, your effort, your energy. Uh, you are responsible and do what duty calls, even at your own expense. And sometimes at the expense of your family as well. Really incredible. All right? Uh, but there still may be unhappiness. Uh, because doing, you may say inwardly, why am I doing more than others? All right? Why are the others doing so little and I'm doing so much? Uh, if others aren't doing their share, especially if doing more than the paid stuff, wow, that's, the, that's the worst, all right? Why am I working harder than people who are paid uh, for it? But you're already very good, dutiful, responsible. How about the professional stuff? Honestly, some don't do their duty. And uh, really, as a pastor, I'll be honest with you, I'm the top dog, uh. No, no, I don't find any of you questioning me <laughs> whether I'm doing my job or not. Most, mostly people are very, very respectful and they, they won't even dare to touch or dare to question uh, the pastor, at least not in our CAC makeup. Like in some churches where they employ the pastor, all right, uh, sometimes the board does question. You know? But in our CAC, uh, we are members of the annual conference and they are, we are sent down to the local church. Uh, but you are very good, all right, so you don't tend to question. Uh, so I decide what's my scope of response responsibility and involvement. Then I say, oh, my responsibility only like that. Uh, you pay me so much, so I give you like that. Uh, you all don't question. Or you actually know, don't have really a place to question. All right? So yeah, some pastors perhaps don't do their duty. Some do what they have been paid for, their duty, their job. They punch the clock and when the shift is over, they are gone. All right? Uh, and this is one of the challenges, as I say, as an itinerant speaker or itinerant pastor. You know, because if every few years I, I change the church, wow, emotionally quite exhausting. Because I get to know the, the people, you know, I get to love, I get to care. Then after a few years, we're kind of gone, you know, in our system, that's not so good. All right, but some pastors basically do their job, at least they do their job. Some do it as a calling. I'm called to be a pastor. It's not just a job. But 
It can be a calling and you still don't love the sheep. It's possible. You can go beyond your duty. You can go beyond what you are paid for and still not necessarily do it out of love. The reality for both is this, that motivation, not love for cheap, but sense of responsibility, right? which is good. Uh, no sense of ownership of sheep under their care. If it's a job, I go from church to church. It's just my job. I do what is necessary. I do pastoral care. Uh, but that's, don't have that kind of connection. Okay? Uh, so it may end up as a take it or leave it. If they don't want to follow, what can I do is their attitude. Uh, it tends to be task-oriented. That's the vital difference. If you do leadership, whether as a paid staff or even as a volunteer uh, leader or volunteer shepherd, if we do it as a job, it tends to be task oriented. All right, uh, you are more interested in building up the pen or accomplishing goals or functioning in their own in their role in the church organization. And unfortunately, that's the seduction of leadership, Christian leadership or pastoral leadership even. Uh, because many times when you go to a church, as a pastor, right, you bring human uh, values. Uh, and the one hu constant human value is, you know, I want to grow the church super big. All right? And that becomes your vision. You know? Rather than care for the sheep, uh, church growth, targets, etc. becomes your driving force. And I'll, I'll be honest, I think many times we pastors fall into that trap. Because when I go for seminars, one of the favorite questions always is, uh, which church are you from? Right? Then the second one is, uh, how big is your church? <laughs> Alright? Then you say, my church is 2,000 trees. Wow, then, wow. You know, say, as if, like, wow, what can I learn from you? Uh, wow, how your church so big? Uh? You tell the church, well, my congregation 100 only. Then, oh, it's like, oh, they almost feel embarrassed for you, you know, kind of thing, you know. <sighs> but unfortunately, that's the reality. Right? When we allow our own human goals, uh, drivenness, values. Uh, you should find the world, right? Targets and KPIs and all this kind of thing. But unfortunately, it's so human that sometimes it's even brought into the church. And it is, then we end up very task-oriented. Shepherding uh, is less about being sheep-oriented and caring for the sheep. I'm learning that. <laughs> I've been 20 years in ministry. This is my 20th year in ministry. Quite long. And I'll say in my earlier days, days I was more task-oriented, uh, really. Uh, God need to work, and I'm still working it out, all right? But I'm moving now, after 20 years moving more, I think it's more about sheep, uh, caring about sheep, uh, feeding the sheep, uh, then about so-called you know, tasks, orientation, goals, expectations, uh, KPIs, etc. Because if that's, more, that's what the shepherd does, he may drive the sheep more than lead the sheep. And when push comes to shove, personal considerations do try. That's the challenge of the hired staff, uh, the pastoral staff, or even the pastor. But the reality for both even, right? Even as a lay leader or a lay shepherd. Let's take a look at Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 14, I'm the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So what are these qualities that Jesus has? First, he says he's a good shepherd, uh, Carlos, uh, which is also can be translated beautiful, good, useful. But much more, uh, the phrase is on behalf of the sheep or for the sheep, right? Greek is hyperton probaton, which implies a self-sacrificing perspective. So the way Jesus relates to the sheep, to you and I, is not like, oh, I know you, let's have a good time together. But it goes beyond that to even self-sacrifice. At his own expense, he loves the sheep, all right? He also knows his sheep personally and intimately. Okay, it's not a job. It's a personal friendship. The sheep are the goal and reason for everything he does. That's the difference. That's the difference. Do you know that? Everything that Jesus does for you 
or rather everything that Jesus does is for you. You are the reason, in a sense, for his existence. Not, not that he, no, without us, he'll die, la, but you, you know what I mean, right? He lives for you. My friends, that's the good shepherd. And that's who our Lord Jesus is. Yes, he says, you need to hear my voice and you need to follow me. <laughs> but on the flip side, he'll do everything for you. There's nothing he won't do, even give up his life for you because the true shepherd loves his sheep more than his life. The hired hand loves his life more than the sheep. Uh, I don't think I love you more than my life. <laughs> right? I think uh, very, very few people would be able to say that. But our good shepherd loves your life more than his own life. My friends, that's our Lord Jesus. So when he asks you to do something, it's not to force you to obey. It's always for your sake. That's why when he asks us to do something, we need to be really confident and know, hey, it's never for his sake. It is always for your sake. And he will protect you or from the wolf, Satan, at all costs. My friends, this is our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he's Lord, yes, he's Lord, he's Master, we obey him. But on the other hand, everything he does is for you and for me. There's nothing he does that is for himself or being self-centered or selfish. Why did he die for a sheep? For this reason, uh, which is their tutor, the Father loves me because haughty, therefore I lay down my life so that I may take it back. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it back. This commandment I received from my Father. Right? So why did he die for a sheep? Simply just because. <laughs> just because. Of course, because it's love. All right? He had authority to decide about his life. No one can force him. He opted to die for his sheep, all right, because he was loved by the Father. Okay, so one way of reading this, uh, these two verses is that the Father loves him because uh, of this, okay, but it may be better that because the Father loves me, that is the reason I lay down my life. So there are two ways, right? One way to say, uh, the Father loves me because I'm willing to lay down my life for a sheep. That's one way of reading this text. But another way that is based on the Greek that's equally valid is this. Because the Father loves me, that is the reason I lay down my life. Can I suggest maybe this may be a better reading? Because we need to be driven by love. If you and I are going to be the good shepherd to those that God has put under our care, we can only be good shepherd and love if we experience the love of Jesus. Okay, so that's another reading. Because Jesus experienced the love of the Father and He loves the Father so much, He loves the sheep. And I think that's the key. It's trying to experience our Lord Jesus' love and His love for me in such an incredible way. Then I think I can die to myself and go beyond myself to love His sheep, to love others. So, for us to emulate, well, Jesus does set the example. But can we be reasonably expected to do the same? Uh, no. <laughs> That's why there's only one good shepherd. <laughs> I'm not asking you to be the good shepherd because you cannot be the good shepherd. Only Jesus can be the good shepherd. But I think as shepherds, if you are a leader, whether as a cell group, in your youth, as a disciple, I think Jesus calls to care for a sheep on his behalf, we can aspire to be like Him. And I think that's the call for those of us who are discipling or leaders of the church. We cannot be like Jesus totally, you know, but we must inch our way slowly uh, there. Uh, because that's what the sheep need, right? The sheep need love. They need someone who's willing to go beyond themselves to care for 
the sheep. And in caring for the sheep, then they know the care of Jesus the shepherd. But it's not going to be easy. But Jesus has set the example. Right, so let me conclude. Uh, Jesus' job is to lay down his life. <laughs> uh, and for the sheep, our job is to hear and follow. Right, so let me, uh, number one, emphasize Jesus is a good shepherd. My friends, I don't know about you. Sometimes, you know, when things happen in life, we always question whether God loves us, uh, etc. Uh, can I tell you from this passage and many, many passages in Scripture, when God does something or allows something in your life, it is always for you, for your good, for your sake. It's never for his own sake because love always does what is best for another. But having said that, we must remember the other part is we listen to the shepherd's voice and we follow. In us, if we don't listen and follow, there may be things in our lives that are, we are suffering for it, that are not good, and we can't blame God for it. We can't blame God for it because we have not been listening to Jesus and following Jesus. So the things that happen are not because God has allowed it in that sense, huh? uh, but because we have caused it on our own because of our disobedience or our rebellion. So the flip side, you want Jesus to be your good shepherd, then we need to be good sheep. Jesus will still be a shep good shepherd even though we are not a good sheep. But if we want to have the ideal relationship that He really wants for every one of us, then we need to fulfill this other part as well. Just as He's the good shepherd, we need to be His sheep. And when He calls, we listen and we follow. Let's pray. My brothers and sisters in Christ, without fail, Jesus is the good shepherd. There's, there's no one who can love you, not your parent, not your boyfriend or girlfriend, not your spouse, who can love you or who does love you like Jesus does. There are limits to human love. There are limits to the ability even to love. And in every human relationship, there are always, there are always elements of self-centeredness, selfishness. But the only relationship which is totally selfless is Jesus' relationship with you. I hope that inspires you, you know, and causes you to draw near to Jesus and not be afraid of Him, but to run to Him. But on the other hand, if you know and realize that, hey, I've not been a good sheep. I've not been really listening to the voice of my master, my shepherd. Or even if I can hear, I don't follow. But for Jesus to really bless you with his good shepherding, my friends, you need to follow. Because we don't follow, He can't lead us to the pastures to feed. He can't lead us to the waters to drink. If you want Him to do that, we have to follow. So at this time, if our shepherd has been speaking to you, and perhaps in your heart you know, hey, I've not been following, Will you like to tell him, Lord, and to stop being a disobedient sheep? And I'll choose to follow. I choose to follow because I know I can totally trust you. That whatever you have called me to do, wherever you lead me, is always from a position of love. It's always for my good. So my brothers and sisters in Christ with you, fall in love with a shepherd who has totally fallen in love with you but you follow the shepherd 
to love Him because He has loved you. So may, your heart, may our hearts respond to His call. May we be like sheep following our shepherd. In Christ's name. Amen.
because we know that we are always safe in the arms of Jesus and we are always blessed in your arms and with you as our shepherd. So as you go following the voice of Jesus, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please do be seated. Service is over. We want to spend a short time talking to the Lord over whatever He may have impressed upon you. And do join us in fellowship and a small snack outside of the sanctuary, especially if you are a guest. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you.